Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarner with Weingarner Racing. It's Saturday, so it's an update video day. These are the AFR LS3 heads, and I just looked and realized something on the head, so I'll probably talk about that during this video too. Anyway, these are the AFR and Enforcer LS3 heads. Uh, those will get brought up. And anyway, these are a bunch of updates. So I want to talk about something I did on the last video. The last video was the difference between the um, camshaft for the small block Chevy and the LS Dino Mule. And one of the things I didn't do a very good job of explaining, I could tell from the comments, had to do with the cam card itself. So when I was dealing with the cam card, this is not that cam card that I used in the video, by the way. Uh, when I was dealing with the cam card itself, I should have been more specific and said that the um, this is all based on the tappet, so the movement of the lifter. And I kept referring it to the valve, which isn't entirely the case. And I really wanted to deal with just the cam card itself because that action is from the cam, so from the when the lifter moves. After that point, so after this cam card, the amount of variables that come into play are infinite, uh, essentially. So when I was talking about that, I was really trying to get you guys to compare the differences between that solid camshaft and the small block Chevy versus the hydraulic um, from just the cam card standpoint as far as the actual what the cam is, because literally after that, things change completely. and. Several people had pointed this out. Whenever you have on a solid cam, I think that, yeah, and you got that 20,000 duration number, they were like, well, in this case, it's got a 16 for lash. Remember, this is on the rocker side, so if you did the other side of the rocker, uh, so there was the 16, that's on the multiplied side, so if you divide 16 by your rocker ratio, in this case, 1.6, it'd be 10,000. So people were like, you're skewing the numbers, it's incorrect. Um, that's 10,000 duration. That's not um, 20,000, like it says on the card. The problem with that is, if you pick up a hydraulic roller camshaft card, it says 6,000. There is no lash for a hydraulic roller. So why do you think they put 6,000 there? It's to take up the slack and the roller and everything else. It's only 6,000. So if I take out the 10,000 that I've got for lash in this in this case, which by the way, the small block Chevy one, most people only hear parts of my video, and I'm 100% certain of that because the actual last for the um, small block Chevy wasn't a comp cam, it was an Urson, and that was 22,000, so it was actually moving 13. But anyway, um, the other 10 or whatever we would say for this, that's for the same amount of deflection. That's the reason why cam companies in general use the 20,000s for the advertised duration for a solid cam, and they use 6,000s for a hydraulic roller. And then when I was trying to get out the video, because forced through the trees with people, um, is that these numbers, that 20,000s and the 6,000s, those are what they're putting on the cam card to try to compare. So if you were trying to theoretically compare a hydraulic roller camshaft to a solid roller camshaft, you could use those numbers. You can't use 50,000s. And that was the biggest point of the video. So, which I thought I did a good job explaining, but I forgot, internet knows everything. Um, the thing is, you can't use the 50,000s number because of the lash between the two, which I thought I showed. So anyway, that was the biggest point I was trying to make of the video, but I definitely did not do a good job of explaining the, the whole valve movement because they're like, well, rocker ratios and blah, blah, blah. And here's why I left all that out. And I'm just gonna go quickly through some of this. If you have a thicker push rod versus a thinner push rod affects how much actual deflection it is. A solid roller spring has way more spring pressure than a hydraulic roller spring, which means it's going to deflect more. The rocker arm material, whether it be aluminum or steel, LSs are steel, the ones that was used on our um, small block Chevy, most of them were aluminum. There was only one that I used with steel. Push rod diameter, push rod length, which LS does have an advantage, their push rods are much shorter. Um, I could go on and on and on. Point being is, from the moment after the cam, that's the reason why I was really only showing the cam cards, it's things are out the window. Whatever this says, isn't what you really get. Uh, and uh, I should do a video on that, and I will. And you're like, well, you should probably right now stop what you're saying, go do a video and just show the engine through the whole process and do it. The problem is both those engines are about two hours away and at the time. I will do that because I think it's very well warranted. So I could actually uh, put a degree wheel on it and show the actual lift for each point so you could actually see how different they are. But that's just on a stand. Once an engine is running, you can have more deflection too. So what I guess what I'm trying to say is, this is what we think happens. This is not at all what happens in the engine. 
cam cart. This is just, this is what we hope. Anyway, that probably went too long on expl explanation. So why are these AFR LS3 heads here? Because I talked to the customer. See, this customer actually bought this. He's a viewer on the channel as well. And he bought these heads from me just to try on the dyno, which if you watch the LS dyno meal, this is the ones that have been on there. And anyway, they're off because I've already changed the heads. So I've already changed and put on a set of Cathedral 243 heads, tested those last Wednesday and Thursday. And then I put on the Promax small bore LS3 heads. And what happened on Monday, so this is like news to you guys, I actually tested a different camshaft, um, a much larger one than what had been used besides the Texas Speed. And the one that was tested was a 243 durational intake, 246 on exhaust, so that's three degrees of split. 108 lobe separation because what I absolutely love is I forget that the internet is also experts at camshafts and it clearly which is amazing because I don't know I should probably have kept a tally of how many times people have said what they should run in the LS as far as the camshaft and I don't know how many said you should do a 108 LSA you should do a 243 or something duration you should definitely be a bigger one and each and every time they're and I've said in that one video, please stop parroting because you're parroting stuff. If you have not tested that, and most of these people that are doing that have never even been on a dyno, but regardless, they read it somewhere, so that has to be true, and then so-and-so said something. So I tested it, and uh, that will be much, much later. If you want those results, I'm putting a link in the description so I can text you that information so you can actually see. It will shock you, um, but yeah, I, I have those numbers. Um, I wasn't... In case you're wondering why I didn't talk about it last week was because last week, if you watched that, my update video, the camshaft was supposed to be next date and was supposed to be there for me to test and it wasn't there. Gary Dunsworth at Dunsworth Machine was kind enough on Monday. He's like, the engine was still on the dyno. He hadn't taken it off yet, luckily. The camshaft showed up and when I got there on Monday morning, I put it in and we dyno tested. So um, yeah, just to try different things. Um, also tried the Dominator on it, tried some, a few different little things, nothing major, just to see what would, if there was any effect we could make on it, timing as well. But if it hadn't been for him, that test wouldn't have taken place either. Also for the viewer that sent in the camshaft, he was very brave enough to do that. Speaking of camshafts, I've got others coming, so just so you know. So that 243, 246 on a 108, I think it had about 620 lift. So it's about the same lift, by the way, as the Texas Speed. Just way more duration on the intake, uh, less on the exhaust, and a tighter lobe separation. But the other camshaft that should be coming, this one I'm having Urson grind, it's a regrind. This one should be a 234 duration and a on intake and a 248 on exhaust. And it should come in at a 111. Depends on how you can get it to grind because he's regrinding the cam. So there's not a lot of room you could do when you regrind. So it might be coming in at a 110 LSA. And that'll be about a 620 lift. Someone else is sitting in a much, much larger camshaft, a 252 uh, intake duration, I think 258 on exhaust, uh, 111 lobe separation and a 620. And I'll test that as well. You might say, why didn't you ever test any of the different camshafts on the small block Chevy? Benefit to LS, it's way easier to change. So on, on the small block Chevy, if you change the camshaft, they make two piece front covers so you can change camshafts quicker that way but you have to take off the intake manifold because you can't just turn the cam over and all the lifters pop up out of your way. It didn't work that way on a small block Chevy. It's, uh, you gotta take off the manifold. So there's one more step you gotta do. Um, the other thing is because the camshaft on the small block Chevy is solid roller, that means every time I have to readjust the lash and that actually takes quite a bit of time, uh, more so than an LS where you just torque the pedals, the rockers down, you're done. But anyway, so, the next time it goes on the dyno, just to give you further on, the next time the LS goes on the dyno, the thing that's gonna be tested will be this. This guy here, and I don't know if this will be next, but it will be getting tested. This is the AFR LS3s. This guy said, why don't you go ahead and, we worked out a deal, but um, he said, why don't you go ahead and port them and see what you can get out of them, a little bit of pocket porting. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little pocket porting, mill these down, because he's actually had the second largest chamber of all the heads that will be tested. The Brodix BR3s actually have the largest. I think they're like 72, which I feel bad for that one because that pulls a lot of air, but it literally has, the, will have the less, least compression. But anyway, so I'm gonna do some little pocket porting on these deals and retest it, which would be kind of neat. 
And I'll test it against that Texas Speed camshaft because that's actually the customer's camshaft that owns these. But I don't know if I'll be doing it on the next session, maybe, but for sure the next things that'll be tested will be two different other heads. So I'm done with the Promax small bore LS3s. If you wanna hear about those, you, like I said, just in the link in the description, uh, buy that, 30 bucks, you'll get it. Otherwise, wait for probably a month or a month or so uh, to get the, watch the video on that. But anyway, I'll be testing, the next head will be the Brodix BR3 heads, which are ported. Not heavily, but they are ported. And then also the Promax large bore LS3 heads. And I'm hoping by that time I should have these done too, so I could test this heads as well. During that process, that's when all those cans will be tested too. So a lot to go on. I would like at that point to have other intake manifolds as well to test. So if you have one, send them in. And you're like, well, when are you gonna do it? I don't know, it might be a month, month and a half. Because also the other thing is it costs money to dyno. I've said this before, every time someone buys those $30 worth of um, tech stuff, that goes for dyno fees, that's straight up. Is it paying for it all? No, absolutely not. So as a matter of fact, I think I've sold five, so if you do five times 30, that's $150. The one dyno session alone on, the, on Monday, which Gary gave me a hell of a deal, was 175. So it didn't even break even on that one. And that doesn't include the one on Wednesday and Thursday, that one was, I think it was closer to 700. So you get what I'm saying, it's not breaking even, but I'm not I'm trying not to go as much in the hole. So if you wanna see that happen sooner, you can purchase more of them, that definitely makes it happen. Except for this, it's still gonna take me time. So I obviously have customer stuff I've gotta get done. Speaking of which, on Monday, because I went down there to dyno, we were off the dyno by 10.30, that's why I cut such a good deal on the dyno time. I mean, we got there at eight, off at 10.30. I went to work on the big block Chevy 540 dyno mule. That's another engine I use to test. That one, as you may know, I have the AFR 385 heads for. I've got that all put on. That's all ready to dyno. So um, as soon as I get the freeze time and money, I'm gonna put that 540 on to dyno test. We're gonna see how much the AFR 385 heads make versus what was on there before, which was the Pro Max 317s that were essentially stock except for had been milled down uh, to 110 cc chambers. So. That should be interesting because they flow a lot more. By the way, I, I didn't even, I totally forgot to bring this up too. When I had flowed those 317 heads, I'd flowed them on a three, 4310 bore because it had been used on the 496 dyno mule. I did not flow them on the larger bore until this last week. Um, they are really good on the, they flow way more on the bigger bore. So I flowed them on a 4625 bore. Just to give you an idea. So on the 4310 bore, they flowed like 380. The 4625, they went 405. And the low lift numbers were fixed and stuff. It definitely made a difference. I have since cut those heads out, those 317s out, to a 2350 intake valve on a 50 degree seat and a 1880 on a 50 degree seat. Because I'm gonna get after it on those ones. I'm gonna see if I can't beat these 385 heads from AFR. Disadvantage for those 385 heads, they've got a 119 cc chamber, so it lost almost a point of compression, but it did gain a lot of flow. The other thing that will be tested at the same time is I'm gonna switch the intake rockers, take the one seven ratio off and put one eight on to see if more lift actually makes more of a difference, especially on those heads since they flow so well at the higher lifts. Do I know when that's gonna happen? Absolutely not. Because also there's one other engine that's still gonna be dynoed and that is my, this is not a dyno mule, but it's my big block Chevy. It's a 477. It's actually overboard, so it's, a little, it's even bigger than that now. I think it's like 482. But it's got a 1071 root style supercharger on it and that one's next one probably to be dynoed. That's going into the Camaro. The goal is to get the Camaro to run in the fours and the eight and sevens and the uh, quarter. Probably could have done it before, but eh, I just wanted a blower motor. I've always kind of wanted a supercharger. I think they're cool like that. Um, I don't race enough, so I want my own cool stuff. But anyway, essentially that's all that's happened. Uh, my son's done with swimming. He's got two weeks off before he starts his training for short course season. The Olympics are happening now, which if you haven't watched it, you probably should. And I, cause I wanna bring up something on that just real quickly, uh, not tech related at all. So America's been doing okay with swimming, not as dominant as we usually are. And I don't wanna discredit any of the swimmers. It's really, really hard. I, and I totally get that. But one of them I wanna talk about was Caleb Dressel. So yesterday he did the 50 free and then he also did the 100 fly. And I watched it live. So I went in next, I wanted to watch it live. And uh, I was there at trials and watched him do it. He's, really good athlete. As you remember, the last Olympics, I think he had eight gold medals. 
So really great swimmer. And I'm only bringing this up because if, if you watch my videos and talk about my son, I would never have thought a, a, a professional athlete would have the same issues. And it was, I almost want to show it to my son now. But essentially what um, Caleb Dressel was talking about was after he got done with the 2020 Olympics, he had won eight, like eight gold medals. So you would think from my standpoint, everybody that's watching, he should be ecstatic. When he went home, he actually felt devastated because he didn't do as well as he thought he should. Like he didn't go as fast. So forget the gold medal. He was racing the clock and thought he should be faster. And he went into a severe depression and had some other problems with that as well, like mental things. And to listen to him describe it, it was almost the same thing that I thought I felt with what Bishop was doing two weeks ago at Swim State because we're up in the stands and we're watching him go the fastest times he's gone in all but one event. So in my mind, when we're up in the stands, he should be just plumb ecstatic, but not in his mind. In my, his mind, he felt like an utter failure because he wasn't as fast as he thought he should be. The same thing Caleb Dressel was addressing, which I thought that was, I didn't, I thought it was just a Bishop thing and that I didn't think other athletes, especially at the professional level, had that same kind of thing. I, I wish, Caleb Dressel's going through some stuff now anyway, but I, I wish a professional athlete would talk to him about that, to work him through that. Because I'm telling you now from, there is nothing from a parent standpoint that could get him out of that. Uh, it's definitely, it's not just physical, it's definitely a mental game. But anyway, uh, I was watching Caleb Dressel live and he had done the 50 and that was his best event. I think he's the fastest in America, but he had gone, he finished sixth, he didn't make the podium. And then probably 30 minutes later, he had to swim the 100 fly and this is the semifinal, he didn't finals. He finished fifth in his semifinal. The next one went and his time wasn't faster than any of those, he didn't make the finals. And this is an event in 2020 where he got gold. Um, when he got out and stuff, he was seen normal because he had a good face on, kind of reminded me of Bishop. And then when he was walking away, because cameramen are dicks, uh, they followed him and they captured him. I mean, I mean, he's 27 years old, he's crying. He's legit crying. He has some girl comforting him. I don't know if it's his coach or whatever it is. And you could tell he's just like crushed, right? Broken. Um, I really felt for him. And I also thought, when I was watching, I was like, cameraman, man, we got it. We got it. He, he's crying. Why you got to keep beating him up? Pan away. Please, for the love of God, stop being a dick. Uh, but no, they just stayed on him, which was weird because we are watching it live. But in the, after, in the evening, I was like, honey, um, Caleb Dressel really had a moment. I want you to see this because this is what Bishop went through. It's not just Bishop. And luckily in the evening, they only showed like maybe half a second of him being emotional with his coach and then they didn't do any more. And I was like, thank you. Thank you, NBC, for realizing that's probably not the best thing to show. Um, yeah, but anyway, I know this had nothing to do with engine stuff, but it just made me think of Bishop and the whole thing. Please watch the Olympics. I enjoy it. Um, did you see... Forget swimming. I don't know if you guys saw that Tur Turkish man who won the gold in the shooting. I mean, it's a meme now for sure, but oh, epic. Love it. I know we didn't win, which would think America should dominate that. We got more guns than any other country. Uh, now, he looked like he looked like a soccer dad that just dropped off his kids and was like, you know what? I'm going to go target shooting. He didn't have a fancy glass on nothing. Amazing. And the female rugby team from America, I for one, I love rugby. They do not show it enough in the United States, period. And they should because, to me, I, football is cool to watch, but you're soft. You're soft. Watch the rugby player hit someone, then watch the NFL player hit someone. They're almost as bad as soccer now with the way that they're doing their injuries. And your little shoulder checking, that's get laughed at it in rugby. Watch that female um, United States rugby player literally bowl over someone and then sprint 100 meters and scored so we could win the bronze. I love rugby and it's amazing they should. So America did great on that too. Um, but anyway, also speaking of which, even basketball, I'm not a, I hate NBA because I think uh, they don't play as hard. I think NCAA does, except for at the Olympics. It's weird because I think they're actually playing better and they look fantastic when they play. It looks like this is fun. Um, probably because it's, they're already getting paid from their NBA thing. This is just, let's just go do it. And it, it is neat. So anyway, Long story short, it had nothing to do with uh, that. But guys, there's my update. Um, keep watching. I think on Tuesday or whatever, I'm gonna do the video of the Cathedral 243 ported heads versus 
that head, how do they compare? I think that's going to be that one. I've already done the dyno test, obviously, but how far different are they? And uh, I think that'll be Tuesdays. So, guys, thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Um, try to give you more stuff. Start, try to stay cool, too. Um, you guys, remember, I don't pour crest iron heads. I'm no Superman. You guys take care.